Welcome back to another video guys, Thermal here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get the Wild Stalker armor set from Tomb of Sargeras. This is a pretty cool transmog. I'm in the process of finishing it off myself, just need to do two more pieces. But I've been running it for the last three weeks solo. And I'm just going to take you um, through that today. Uh, but uh, some of the recommendations I would say is bring along a leech pet at, at the bare minimum. But preferentially probably a tanking... Um, pet like the silverback because he's got that special ability when falling below 40% health he reduces incoming damage by 60% which is quite handy um, so yeah we're going to get into that now okay so first getting to to Masargeras you can take the portal to Azuna and then just fly from there to Tomb of Sargeras. So if you don't know where that is on the map, it's just over on the Broken Shore. This is the entrance to Tomb of Sargeras. First boss is Gorath. He is pretty much just a tank and spank. You can see I'm doing it with the warrior on this one. He hasn't been able to solo the last two bosses, so I came along. I'm going to show him the strat, at least for a hunter. I don't know if you can do this without being, at least without being a hunter, I don't know how to do it. I've just been um, using my pet to beat the second last boss. Um, but I'm not sure how you'd beat it without a pet, to be honest. The second boss is Demonic Inquisition. And this one's got a little bit of a strategy to it. So you can see the bar in the bottom of my screen starting to fill up in the middle there uh, with red sort of energy. When that fills up, I need to press um, the button to remove me from this realm. You can see down the bottom of my screen there's a button there. Um, I'll just wait for myself to press it, I think, once my energy is all the way f close to full. That'll take you into a different realm, which you then hit this guy here and grab these orbs. And then once your energy gets back to zero, you can see it pops back out. So you can teleport back out. And then the rest of the fight is pretty much just a tank and spank from there. So you just keep going in out as your energy fills back up and as you um, get your energy back down low again. The third boss is Harjatan. Pretty straightforward again, another tank and spank boss. Um, so you can just kill this guy pretty, pretty easy. Uh, next boss we do is Mistress Sazine, and, you know, pretty much another tank and spank. Obviously there's mechanics, but because, you know, we've got so much leech, we just heal through it. Uh, you can down this one pretty quick. It also drops the Abyss Worm, so if you're trying to farm mounts, um, this one's definitely a nice, nice one to keep going in every week and just killing up to this boss if you just want that mount. Next boss we do is Sisters of the Moon. Uh, once again, Tank and Spank, fairly straightforward. Has three phases, just switches between the three different um, sisters. The next boss is the Desolate Host. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind on the last phase when the Desolate Host comes out, kill him first before killing the Soul Queen. Otherwise, you'll see what happens here. Um, the boss will reset itself. So just that's the only thing you need to remember for this one. You would have noticed as you were doing Tomb of Sargeras that there's these weapons that drop and you've been clicking them. After you've clicked four weapons, it'll unlock a chamber at the center where pretty much where you started, where those heroes are gathered. Then you go down and the next boss you fight is Maiden. The only really thing you need to know for Maiden is she puts bombs on you, so it will explode you in the backwards direction. So it's important to face yourself against the wall, otherwise, if you explode down into the center, um, you'll die and you'll have to start again. The other thing, she has one phase where she starts channeling a spell, this one here. And um, you just need to kill that shell um, and then interrupt her and also dodge these things, which I did a poor job of doing as well. So we're getting to the pointy end now, last two bosses, and these bosses have um, a pretty important strategy to follow, otherwise you probably will lose against them, even though you've got you know the gear advantage and everything like that. You can definitely take down um, the boss, it's just there's mechanics that will just one-shot you. And so at the start here, you don't need to use any burst, you're just chilling, because he's going to... Once he reaches 100 energy, he's going to break the floor and you're going to fall down. 
And once he does that, what you're going to want to do is resummon your pet because it sort of glitches out. Your pet um, disappears. So just resummon your pet again. Send your pet on him. And then uh, misdirect to your pet and do a bit of DPS for those seven seconds. You're trying to get as much aggro on your pet as possible. Then, then once the misdirect runs out, move your pet. Um, far away from the platform so you can see my apes moving out there to position the boss and then make him fight the boss again. What you're going to want to do is move away from the boss now onto a platform where you're far enough uh, away from his AoE attack which you'll soon see but yeah so this one here this is going to shatter all of the platforms and um, this is why you need to have your pet to tank because if you're tanking and standing on the green stuff, you're going to die. Like, it kills you really quickly. And so in this phase, what I'm doing is I'm waiting for my misdirect to come off cooldown. And then I'm just using my bursting ability. So then my pet remains holding aggro while I can just slow DPS the boss down. I'm also using feign death on cooldown as well when I can. Um, or at least when I remember to do it. So then I'm dropping aggro as well. The last thing to do... Um, so you can see he's doing another channel of this and if, you know, if he was following you around on these platforms, then all of the platforms would be shuttered now. So you can see that little yellow circle on the ground, you need to stand in that. That yellow circle destroys a platform unless you're standing in that circle. So every time the yellow circle comes back up, then that's when you need to stand in it. Um, good thing we brought the leech pet, as you can see, full health already, just from... Um, the leech healing. Uh, that's pretty much the fight. So just rinse and repeat what I've just said and then eventually he's going to die. The last boss is Kill Jaden and in my opinion he is the hardest boss to kill. He has a couple of phases which you need to be doing different things and I'm going to run you through what to do on each phase. The first phase you need to get him to 80% so you can just DPS him down to 80%. Um, so once we get there, you'll see what happens. We hit 80%, he flies away. He'll also um, drop a couple of clones of us. And you can keep these clones alive if you want to use them for leech a little bit later on, or you can just kill them off. When they do die, they do a lot of damage there, as you can see with those orbs. Um, so this phase, what you need to do is run towards these purple orbs because they're going to hit you away. And if you are not um, close enough to the orb, it's going to knock you off the edge and you're going to die instantly. So every time these spawn, you run to them and you try to position so that they'll hit you to the other orb. And you can see I failed there, but lucky I've got disengage. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much most of this phase is just moving around to the orbs, positioning yourself in a spot so that you're not knocked off of the edge when they explode. Uh, you also have, obviously, a turtle shell if you really mess up and you just won't be able to make it there. You can use that as well to not get knocked off the edge. So he does two more of these and... During this phase, I'm looking at the middle of my screen where it's it's telling me when he does that, like giving the, that text when they're, they're casting the purple orbs. And then I just look where they are. So that's the end of this first phase and he's at 80%. So the next phase starts when he reaches 40% health. But the one thing is he's going to continue dropping those purple orbs throughout um, the grind from 80% to 40%. So just keep an eye out in the middle of the screen for when you get the notification that he's dropping that purple orb and just be ready to move your screen around and look and try and find where it is. Yeah, so you can see it's just um, over in that north eastern corner. Position myself. So after this one explodes, you're going to have a green um, person on you. You can drop that. Pretty much you want to drop it as close to the edge as possible because uh, unless you can heal, if you're a healer, you want to heal that up. But if obviously hunters, you can't heal. So that um, green guy, he's going to drop a big pool of purple 
on the ground, which silences you and does damage as well. But it does it in, a, in an AOE radius. Um, you also get a purple one as well pop up, which you need to kill. So you can see there's the purple pool. That eventually goes away, but it will be there for like, uh, I'm not actually entirely sure, but roughly a minute. Uh, there's another purple orb spawning up. So I just got another 4% to go until I phase him into the next phase. Um, so yeah, quickly just trying to do that. You can see I'm getting stacks here, 10 stacks of... Um, I'm not sure what that's actually called, that debuff, but it does a lot of damage, so you want to phase quickly. And this is the part where hunters are really good, because look on the map, the mini-map. You can see here, we can see... Uh, where Illidan is, so I know exactly where to run to. And there's a specific order that the purple orbs are dropping. It's uh, the southeast corner first, then the southwest, then the northwest, and then the northeast. And then it just keeps repeating that pattern over and over again. And there will be, you'll get it in lots of two. So it'll be, um, you can see there, I get another break again. So then I run back to to Illidan again, get sight, so then I can kill those blob guys, and then, yeah, and then he's dropping another two here, so then I need to run over to that northwest corner, and position myself to fly over to the northeast corner, because that's where the next one drops, and I killed them all, so I finished that phase, but I'm in a good position to not get it knocked off here, and then pretty much the final part of this boss is a, is a tank and spank for the last 40%. Um, the purple orbs no longer spawn, which is the hardest part of the fight. So once you get to this part, you can sort of take a breather. Like obviously don't take your gas off, don't take the gas off the pedal. Um, pretty sure that's the saying. Foot off the pedal. Wow, that was terrible. Um, yeah, so just keep going, just keep DPSing him down. You do get still stacks of that um, green debuff so you want to get them down as fast as you can and um, yeah that's pretty much kill Jaden so once you kill him you'll get spawned uh, to this location and then the loot is just in this skull looking thing spoils of the legion fall so you can pick up your loot from there and that's it, guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Good luck on your transmog or your mount farming journeys, and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.